Hi there, my name is Terry Huang. I'm a teacher here at Theodore Payne Foundation. My background is in plant biology and the biodiversity and taxonomy of plants. Here in Southern California, we have the most amazing climate called the Mediterranean climate. And we are one of five around the world. And these climates have ecosystems that are adapted and have evolved with fire. And so here in California, we have more than 200 species that require some type of fire, smoke, or burning in order to complete their life cycles. Of the species that I want to talk today, there are really two incredible ones called endemic fire followers. And that means these seeds need fire in order to grow and flower properly. And one of them is the large flowered phacelia and what's so fabulous about this plant is it has large lilac flowers and the bees love them and the other one i'm going to talk about today is also whispering bells and this has nodding little yellow flowers and once they get pollinated and the seed heads blow around in the wind they make this whispering kind of whistling sound hence the name whispering bells so we know that these fire responsive species need a combination of heat smoke and char in order to sprout and grow but it's not as clear sometimes what species specifically need so today i'm going to show you three demonstrations two involving fire and one involving smoke paper to help you get your plants to grow and for our first demonstration i'm going to show you how to sow seeds using fire take a fireproof container terracotta stone metal or really thick wood fill it with potting soil to about an inch below the rim and next what you do is take your packet of seeds. And here I wanna sow whispering bells. Take a little bit out. And what we wanna do is make sure we, when we sow, we don't sow too thickly because the seedlings will compete with each other. But we also wanna put just enough so that if the smoke treatment doesn't work on some of the seeds, the others will also sprout and take their place. I think that's just good enough there. The next step is gently rough up the soil surface a little bit and then shake the pot so that the seeds fall into the nooks and crannies between the particles. Now the fun part, find some dried plant material, the softer the better, nothing too thick, woody, or too big, and begin crushing and pulverizing and really laying it on top of the soil surface. And then we're gonna light it on fire. Great, and once you're done burning your material on top here, you want it so that there's a lot of open space for the seed seedlings to come through. And you wanna make sure that most of it is um, turned to ash as well, so that way the compound can really soak in once you water it in. So it should look kinda like this. Not too thick, but not too thin. Just enough where you can see ash, you can smell the smoke, and the seeds get the idea it's time to grow into little plants. And if you don't have a fireproof container, you could use this alternate method. So take a seedling flat, fill it with seedling soil, um, just about an inch below the rim. Then take your packet of seeds. This time I'm gonna sow the large flowered phacelia. Pour it into your hands. These seeds are really tiny, so be very careful. A little goes a long way. And what you're gonna do is take a pinch and just gently sprinkle. This time we won't put our burning material right on top of the seedling flat because it's plastic. Instead, we're going to pre-treat and pre-burn our um, dried materials in a fireproof container and then scoop the ashes while they're still hot and sprinkle them right on top of the soil. And if you're burning material in a, a large fireproof bin, what you should do is take your plant material that's dried, break them into smaller pieces as possible. It'll make the burning press process faster. I'm just going to start to gonna break this up a bit. And as this fire burns, you want to make sure that it burns as fully as possible. So you don't want too much big debris left over. And when you see that the fire has gotten to the point where most of it has turned into ash, I have a lid nearby that's handy to partially cover so that it will start to smoke. It's going great. I can see the ironwood leaves are starting to burn now. You might notice there's still some large material in there, so I'm just gonna let it keep burning. 
Because what we want is when you touch all that material, it just falls into little pieces and to find ash. Just as long as you have enough ash to really get the seeds the signal they need to start to sprout. All right, and while the ashes are still warm, I'm going to scoop and sprinkle it over our flat here. Here we go. Look at that. It's still burning a little. And the reason you, why we want to scoop while the ashes are still hot is that in case of the seeds also need to feel the warmth of the fire, they will get that signal in addition to all the smoke compounds. And try to make as a thin layer as possible because they might have a hard time poking through larger fragments. But what you can do is as seedlings come up, you can gently prick them out and pot them up in their own pots to grow on to get bigger. And once you have enough ash, sprinkle the on top, give it a really good drink. So that way all the smoke compound gets into the soil and stays in there so the seeds can soak it up. For our next demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use smoke paper. And what that is, it's paper that comes in a packet like this. And here are these disks of paper that are embedded with smoke particles. And what you do is you take this paper, soak it in some water, you soak your seeds in it overnight, and the seeds take in the compounds and think there's a fire and they start to germinate. Now the secret to this is make sure don't use too much water and don't use too much of the paper. Um, too much water will dilute the solution, the seeds won't get enough of the smoke compound, and they won't sprout properly. And if you use too much of the paper, you waste precious resources. So what I would do is take this disc for this amount of water, I'm going to split it in half. Here we go. Drop that right in the water, let it soak. Then next I'm going to take my seeds. And this is prickly poppy, one of my favorites. Beautiful, beautiful white flowers. It's almost like a miniature version of a matea poppy, but instead the leaves are really silvery blue and very prickly. What we should do is then take the seeds carefully, and some of the fire following seeds or fire responsive seeds are quite small, so you have to work really carefully. But luckily with this prickly poppy, the seeds are much larger, so they're easy to work with. Simply just take a pinch or however much you want to sow, let it soak overnight, and the next day what you should do is drain the seeds in a coffee filter so you don't lose any. Pat them dry as best as you can, then sow them as you would regularly and watch them grow. Mm -hmm.